If you want to learn sound design in a more structured way with me as your teacher, for the next week only, you can use code 30OFF to get 30% off my sound design course. Link is in the description. In this video, I'm sharing what I believe to be the most underrated type of synthesis, physical modeling, which also happens to be one of the most powerful. In particular, if you're someone that's into the more organic side of electronic music, artists such as Forte and Bonobo, for instance, I think this is definitely going to be a video you'll want to watch. I'm going to start by playing you a bunch of sounds I've been playing with to hopefully get you as excited as I am about this type of synthesis. And then we'll dive into my five biggest sound design tips for getting the most out of these synths. So just to give you a very brief overview, I'm here with Ableton's own physical modeled synth called Collision. So the main thing you need to know with this type of synth is that they are generally split into two parts. So on our left here, we have our exciter. You can see this mallet and this noise section. And this exciter is used to virtually strike some sort of resonator, which is the second part of this process. So for our mallet, we can change things such as the volume, how hard, the mallet is, the noise, and also the color which controls the brightness of this noise. We also have this filtered noise section that we can like low pass for instance. Really where you're shaping most of the sound outside of your exciter is in the resonator. So here we've been using this marimba resonator. The first thing you wanna play around with is usually the decay of the resonator. We can also control the kind of brightness of this material. So if we move it up, the low frequencies will die out first. And if we move this down, the opposite will happen. And then we can obviously change our material if we want. So we could select string. But the main thing you need to know is that most physical modeled synths will be split into an exciter section and also a resonator section. So in addition to collision, Ableton users also have the option of using tension, a similar synth, but based more on string instruments. Some other notable options include Kaivo, a physical modeling synth with a granular twist. Plasmonic is a synth created by legendary developer Brian Clevenger, the creator of Absinthe. This is more of a hybrid between physical modeling and subtractive synthesis. And while the UI might seem a bit intense, it's a great option for those of you that like to dive deep into the sound design. So of my two favorite physical modeling synths on the market, first we have Imagine by Expressive E. Like Collision and Tension, this is also made in collaboration with Applied Acoustic Systems, and it shows this thing sounds amazing.
While Imagine doesn't let you dive quite as deep into the sound design as other options out there, it makes up for it with a great out of the box sound, along with expressive modulation options such as support for MPE. Without a doubt, my favorite option though is from Applied Acoustic Systems themselves in the form of Chromophone 3. Really, really nice Forte style sound. So this is kind of like a top level look at the patch. And um, we also have our browser tab. You can see everything is categorized really, really nicely. So this is the main synth page. We have an LFO to add modulation. We have a noise exciter here that we can filter as well as a mallet exciter. We can either pick one of these. So here we could just have the noise, just have the mallet, or we can combine both, which is really nice. So for instance, we could change the stiffness of our mallet input. We can change things like the noise amount and color. And then obviously in our resonator section, we can choose the different types of resonators as well as balancing between the two. One other parameter that you'll probably find yourself playing around with a lot is the delay and release of each resonator. Also, we just have a very simple effect section, which is a really nice inclusion in Chromophone 3. But yeah, pretty simple stuff. We have our modulation over here, our LFO and envelope. We have our exciter, noise, and mallet section here with a mixer as well, which is really nice. And then the resonator section. There's also some modulation options we have with key tracking, velocity modulation. So now let's move on to some really, really important sound design tips I can give you when using this type of synth. The very first thing that I want to mention is that I found that physical modeling is kind of much more suited to short kind of plucky decaying sounds and kind of monophonic sounds rather than polyphonic pads and stuff like that. I think a lot of the technology really excels in this initial exciter and resonator combo, the kind of transient of the sound. The second tip I want to give you is actually related to velocity. So you can see in here in our MIDI, some of these notes have lower velocity than others. And hopefully you can hear that it adds a lot of expression to the sound. Obviously, physical modeling is trying to emulate real world instruments. Real world instruments are often played at different velocities, of course. And so I think, you know, taking that into consideration when sequencing your sound with physical modeling can really add a lot to the sound. So when I first tried physical modeling a few years ago, one thing that kind of initially put me off was kind of how cold the sound was in a lot of these plugins. But one kind of real breakthrough for me with this type of synthesis is really going wild with processing on these type of sounds. I think it really, really kind of transforms the sound. In a way, it also kind of disguises that it's not actually the real instrument and that it's synthesized. So let me just play you the kind of dry sound again first. So it sounds nice, it's got a really nice acoustic quality to it, but it sounds kind of cold. But once we turn on some processing down here, so first of all, I've just got Soothe to tame some of the harsh frequencies coming out of the patch. Next, I applied a high pass EQ to roll off some of the lows and kind of lighten the sound up a bit. Next, I used Cluster Delay, which is a really, really great new delay plugin by Minimal Audio. I highly recommend you check it out. But for monophonic leads like this, I think delay can be a really useful tool to add a nice kind of shuffle and rhythm to it. One really quick feature I also want to nerd out on in cluster delay that's really nice is it has a ducker built in. So a lot of the time people will use sidechain compression to move their effects out of the way of the original sound. What's really nice about cluster delay is it has a ducker built in so we can change the depth.
And finally, we've just got some Valhalla Vintage Verb. Obviously, this type of synthesis is trying to emulate real physical sounds, so it makes sense to try put it in a real physical space. One really quick tip I also want to give you is not to feel like you have to use both of these layers. As you can see, even just in one layer in Chromophone 3, we've got our two resonators, which is essentially two layered sounds as is. And a lot of the kind of presets in these sorts of synths are really trying to show off the sound design possibilities and that kind of thing. And a lot of them will contain more than one layer. But a lot of the time, in my opinion, this is just completely unnecessary. You know, if you want to layer it with something else, I'd recommend layering with another type of synth or another type of sound, which we're going to cover in just a second. You know, that does add a little something else to the sound, but even just switching this off, I kind of prefer a lot of the time to just go with one layer. This type of synthesis generally results in quite harmonically rich sounds as is. So I find, you know, just using one layer in the synth itself is really all you need most of the time. Having said that, I do want to talk about layering outside of the synth. So here we've got a serum patch from my preset pack, Anthem for Serum. If you want a discount on that, by the way, you can check the link in the description below. As you can hear, there's some effects going on there, which we're going to talk about in just a second. But what I've done is also apply the same MIDI to a different Chromophone 3 patch. And what I've done is tried to isolate mostly the kind of noise and textural part of the sound, mainly by playing around with the decay in the resonator. And this allows us to layer this with a serum patch, which doesn't really have much noise and kind of a textural side to it. And layering in this way can sound really, really great. And that's one of my favorite sound design tips in this video is I think physical modeling is really, really fantastic for layering with other synths that you like. And it can result in a really cool physical sounding synths, which I really, really like. Just to mention, I also grouped these two layers and applied some delay and reverb as well, just to kind of glue them together. And yeah, those are my five main sound design tips for using physical modeling. Hopefully you're as excited about this type of synthesis as I am. I can't wait for the future of this type of synthesis. I think it already sounds amazing, but I think the technology is only going to get better and better. And these synths are just going to be absolutely crazy a few years from now. So definitely get in on this type of synth while you can and start learning it. I think there will be people that are a bit more skeptical and, you know, say, why would I use this type of synth? I could just use a sampler kind of thing. But I think they're really kind of missing the point that with this type of synthesis you have so much control over the harmonics of the sound and I think when you apply a lot of the sound design tips that I just covered you can get really incredible sounds that just aren't possible without this type of synthesis. Just before we go maybe consider checking out my sound design course you can actually get 30% off the course right now using the code 30 off. Link is in the description for that. I highly recommend checking it out if you're after a more structured approach to learning sound design. Whether you're a total beginner or a more experienced producer, I think you'll get a lot out of it and really develop your sound design in a very short period of time. So check that out if you're interested. But other than that, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I really do appreciate it. Please leave me a comment down below with what I should cover in a video next. I'm always looking for new ideas. Other than that, though, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.